Okay, hello and welcome everyone to today's workshop on the Charbak Scholarships to study in France. Um, so today um, I'll just sort of give you an overview of Project Edu Access. I'll, I'll introduce you to your panelists and then we move to talking about two scholarships. Um, one is the Charbak Master's Scholarship uh, to do your master's degree in France and the other is the Charbak Master's Exchange um, Scholarship Program. And uh, we'll have speakers talk about both these scholarships. Um, uh, very quickly, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, Project Edu Access is an initiative that um, recognizes that access to higher education, leadership, and professional opportunities is a privilege that most people from marginalized communities are unable to, are sort of systematically denied. And we try to address this um, and address the accessibility issue, address to, um, and uh, try to improve the barriers for marginalized communities. We do this by providing mentorship, engaging in advocacy, running in-person and online capacity building workshops. And today's workshop is a part of our uh, sort of uh, campaign to make all of these opportunities more accessible. Uh, so we have uh, three really wonderful people who have joined us today. We have with us Malavika, who um, received the Charpak Exchange Scholarship um, to do a semester at the School of International Affairs in Sciences Po. We have Kunal, who um, is currently doing a PhD at Sciences Po, but when received the um, Charpak Scholarship to do an MPhil in economics from Sciences Po. Um, just to note that uh, although Kunal received the scholarship, uh, he did not take it up. He took the Eiffel, um, the France Excellence um, Eiffel Scholarship when we've done a session on that. So um, you can find a recording on our YouTube channel and send the link in some time. And then finally, we have uh, Gorangi, who's do, who just graduated from a master's in public policy from Sciences Po and also received and took the Japak master's scholarship. Um, so thank you so much to the three of you for joining us and for taking the time out on your weekend to speak to everybody about the scholarship. Um, thank you so much and, and welcome to the session. And I will now hand it over to Kunal. Hi everyone, thank you, thank you for joining in. It's indeed, it's a Saturday. Um, thank you for that, welcome. So the chat pack scholarships are, if I remember them more than two, of course, one is the exchange and the masters that we'll talk about. There's also uh, another, another scholarship for people who are visiting for research projects, internships, etc. So that's another thing as well. So yeah, do check the Campus France website. So the Charpak Masters is one of the flagship programs to invite uh, international students to France. And much like the IFU scholarship, it has tons of benefits apart from the, the fee that you, apart from the, the stipend that you receive. Next slide. And again, it's, uh, it's by Campus France, meaning it's provided by the government, not, not just a, a, private, uh, a private enterprise. And uh, depending on the structure of your course, one one year executive or two years full time uh, in your uh, graduate degree, it, depending on your, the duration, they're going to give you uh, the benefits accordingly. And just like uh, just like the IFL Excellence Scholarship, do check that do check the other video by do access. They give you a living allowance, although slightly less than uh, the IFL Scholarship, but it's it's still more than enough. And since you will be on a scholarship provided by the French government, your student visa waivers will be uh, applied. You just have to apply for, you just have to pay the VFS fee when you apply for your visas, but otherwise the general application is free for you. And at of France, that's another tax in, in a way that students pay per year. Uh, and again, since you are a French government scholarship holder, um, your fees or your taxes for the year, for the entire duration of your uh, stay in France will be waived off. Uh, and at the same time, they provide you accommodation assistance and they reimburse your uh, complimentary health insurance. And at the same time, um, since again, you're a French government scholarship holder, your meals at the Cruise, Cruise is another um, organization that helps with accommodation and helps with catering of students. And they have tons of dining halls all across Paris and across France. 
and uh, since you since you you will be on the chart bag, you will receive meals at the cruise residence for one euro. Next slide. And of course, so important eligibility criteria. Uh, you have to be at least up to thirty years old at the time you apply. Since it's a graduate degree, there has to be a, a certain limit at the at the age. Uh, international, of course. Uh, sadly, other South Asian uh, countries can't apply for the for the chart pack. And um, you need to show proof of your education at the master's level, of course. And at the same time, you need to be in touch with a French institution, which would eventually offer you an uh, which will send you an admissions offer. So just like the Eiffel scholarship, you need to have an admissions uh, offer, or at least a conditional offer to be able to apply. The thing how it, the, the way it works with the Eiffel is a bit different. So do check that uh, video later on. For the chart bike, you need to apply yourself with a conditional or an unconditional admissions letter. And at the same time, um, the scholarship will only provide you funds or a stipend when uh, based on your stay in France. So, for example, if you have a two-year, uh, if you have a two-year masters, and you decide to say go home for exchange or go anywhere else outside of France, it uh, your expenses will not be covered. The same is true for students who decide to take a gap year. Uh, in your gap year, your benefits that I talked about before will be suspended until you join the the program again. So it covers all kind of studies that you do in France continuously. And whenever you take a break, your benefits also take a break. And um, next slide. Again, so uh, first, the idea would be to apply to your French institution. You can also, of course, talk to Campus France at Alliance Francaise. Um, once you've received any, any conditional or unconditional offer of admission, then you should register yourself on the scholarship portal. And uh, of course, check the deadlines. Because the charpak deadline is a bit different, of course. It's I think towards I think it's next year. We'll we'll go we'll uh, we'll talk about it. But uh, many institutions often have a separate deadline a few months before for you to uh, uh, express your intent to get admitted and at the same time get considered for charpak, Eiffel, and other French government scholarships. So the deadlines may or may not be the same. So do check it. And you need you only have one application per applicant. You may have multiple universities from where you've received an admissions offer, but you need to provide your priorities, your, your ranking of these universities. Next slide. And uh, for your, these are basic application documents that you need, of course, you need a passport. And as I said before, you need an admissions letter. And you need a certified uh, certified mark sheet or a diploma of your uh, high school high school exam, the 12th, and as well um, your bachelor's. If you've done a master's, if you've done any any higher education up until your application to France, you need a certified uh, you need a, a certified mark sheet. And unofficial transcripts are still fine, but they need to be stamped. Of course, they need to be on letterhead. Mm, of course, French language requirement is not not really is not compulsory, but if you have it, great. It, it has an advantage, of course, for you to get for you to settle in here. Um, and in terms of based on your program, um, if you need if you require if they require work ex as an advantage or if they require work ex in general for executive degrees, etc., you need an employment internship record. Um, one thing that could be that maybe I can recommend is that for these kind of uh, certificates like employment internships or uh, work ex certificates, preferably having them in French would be much nicer because any kind of legal documentation that happens in France in, happens in French. It doesn't, uh, a, a legal document or a, a proof of something that you've done in English is not acceptable. So if you have it in French, great. You can talk to Alliance Francaise again in your city. They will translate it for you. And voila, next slide. Um, and now you need uh, for your application documents, of course, you need a CV, updated CV. I mean, for master students at this stage, one page would be would still be great. Two pages, of course, that's that, I think that's the limit. Uh, letters, letters of recommendation, uh, as we've written here, you need either um, a stamped letter from your university admin, maybe on a letterhead, 
or if not that, then you need the full credentials of your re referee in the letter. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. The the format of a letter of recommendation doesn't look as similar to a cover letter, for example. So you. So when you apply, it's best to contact your referees, and at the same time for your master's programs, you will need some at least some academic references, right? So at least in those cases, preferably ask your referee to uh, submit the letter on letterhead to you. And uh, I don't, if I remember right, it's not it's not a, an anonymous letter that to be sent. So I think you get the letter from your referee and then you upload it on the portal. But do check that. Uh, I think I'm done here. I'll, I'll hand it over to Gorangi. Thank you, Kunal. And thank you everyone for joining. Um, after looking at this um, general information, we now focus a bit more on how you would craft your application and what to include in your statement of purpose. So um, here we have a, a few general tips. In any statement of purpose, uh, generally, we would prefer it to be one to one and a half pages. The idea is to keep it brief and uh, bring in all your experience very briefly and in a very crisp manner. Um, for the scholarship, it is important to note that the statement of purpose you would write for your um, in for your university program would differ um, quite a bit, I would say, from the scholarship statement of purposes. So uh, these ones you have to focus a bit more on why do you need the scholarship? How are you going to um, empower yourself with the help of the scholarship? How is it going to help you throughout your year, not just through, for your academics, but for um, Ha for having a life also in a new city that you would move to. Um, it's also necessary to, as we mentioned here, that you quantify your expenses, which would be, um, which you are going to handle in future in France and how the scholarship would be helping considerably. It often happens that uh, people would also take other kinds of um, loans, for example, to pursue university programs. So it doesn't harm to mention that you are putting in effort on your side to meet the financial expenses and the scholarship would add on uh, to help you further. The, there is also, so the program you've chosen in France and uh, the program you did in India, there is always uh, it's always important to put a link between the two, how you're prepared also to come to France to pursue your degree, and uh, again, how the scholarship would help. Now, while I say do mention how the scholarship would help you to pursue your um, initiatives in France, it's, it's important to not be repetitive about it, rather... Uh, bring it in a more conclusive manner that these are my goals, this is what I aim to do, and this is how the scholarship would be contributing to my studies, to my career goals, to whatever I wish to pursue further. Next slide, please. Um, so as we discussed for the Sharper scholarship application, there is an online portal which would open and you have to apply through an online portal. When you go on the online portal, um, in the previous years, we have um, noticed that uh, they would uh, they would have some questions on the portal, and you have to answer those questions. This is what you, the statement of purpose is. They just give you in a question format. It may change this year. It could be different, but uh, previously in the years we have applied, it has been uh, in a question format. And we received three questions. Uh, firstly, of course, why did you choose France for higher education? And what motivated your choice for a choice of institution in France? Um, with these questions, there was, at least in the previous years, a word limit attached. So it's very important to be brief, but also be informative and uh, try to include information, relevant information, uh, as much as possible in fewer sentences. It's good because, for example, this first question includes two questions in one. 
it's good to perhaps have two paragraphs, one answering each sub question. Uh, answering in the order would help so that it's more coherent in that sense. You focus first on why you chose France as a destination for your higher education. You could, um, if there are some historical uh, reasonings for that for you, or you have always wanted to, but why, um, it's good to have uh, general sentences that you've always wanted to, but also always follow them with a specific personal reasoning of your own because there would be so many applications who would uh, would just write um they are, they chose france because they've always wanted to well what what makes your reason stand out what is your particular reason for that so it's always important to focus a bit more that is why it would be even though the deadline is um uh a bit uh, you get a few months to work on your application. It's always good to start on early and work again and again on your draft because you would receive more clarity and get it reviewed also from maybe your peers, from your professors who might be able to help you, from your mentors. Um, so that is that is going to help you maybe make it a bit more concrete. Um, for the second sub question, for the institutions, there is this format which we uh, often use when you know using uh, for a statement of purposes uh, is that you start with what the institution is going to give you why you chose the institution uh, what attracted you towards it and then you also briefly mention how you fit in that institution how um, you will contribute to it why you are the right profile for um, for joining that institution in this part you can uh, i am guessing that you can take <clears throat> inspiration from your um previous statement of purpose which you'd write from you for your university application secondly the question was focusing on your academic and professional goals and how are you motivated to participate in the master's program that you have chosen so um in for this this part i won't say this question because it might change or there might be a different format this time but uh, they would ask you when they ask you about your motivation for the master's program it's uh, important to have especially if you're applying for professional masters it's good to mention some concrete goals and to build sort of a chronology and a roadmap as to how you aim to um to achieve those goals and connect the dots between yet yeah, this is what this is the action you wish to take and this is how the master program is helping you maybe you wish to work under some uh, some researcher at the institution some professor at the institutions maybe you want to build your career at some uh, international development organization and for that a mas this master program would be helping you a lot or in other sectors as well in um, in finance sector or in uh, in the hard sciences sector you can always uh, slightly name drop but be careful while you name drop to back it with enough information and enough um, knowledge to show that you have researched well it, the name dropping isn't enough and can um, can be complicated to explain if you just put the name there and there hasn't been enough research behind so always look into it um, a bit more if there is a, some professor you may name drop that yeah they are at that institution be sure to go through their work before to be sure that this is what the kind of initiatives you want to pursue and finally so one in the previous years the application included um some self-reflection on your application um so uh, for highlighting three aspects of application so this would also require you to briefly but concretely answer and highlight your best qualities and fi and finally there is this question about how you will benefit from Charpak Master. So it's very important to mention how the scholarship is empowering you financially as well as holistically in uh, whatever um, endeavors you would pursue further on. Next slide, please.
Um, here we have the timeline for the application. So we see that it would open on the 22nd of December 2023. And it is open until, so the deadline is 20th of March 2024 at 11.59 Indian time. And um, uh, these dates, as now, as of now, these are on the on their website. But please keep checking if there is any updates regarding the dates. And the results are usually published at the end of April. Next slide, please. For the selection, this again, these criteria they are mentioned on their website too. So there is no uh, CGPA or percentage cutoff, which you would have already from your Indian institution. The focus for the selecting the application is rather to look at the candidate holistically. They look at the academic excellence, but not only in the um, how much did you score manner, but what all did you do, what all you were involved in. Also, the, the quality of the application. So again, the quality of the application in the sense that you have had um, uh, experiences academically also, perhaps professionally, if you got the chance, if you did not, perhaps in student associations, in uh, voluntary work, in other ways, um, or it, in your application, even if you had limited chances, maybe because your university did not give you enough opportunity or because of other reasons you did not have access to certain opportunities it is all in that case it's also good to highlight even though you had limited opportunities um, you were always proactive about seeking opportunities and um, even in a limited environment you you um, were encouraged enough to find and that is how you pushed yourself for the and again, the statement of purpose. So all these elements, of course, you will have your CV. But again, the statement of purpose is not just a paragraph of the elements in the CV. It's much more than that. You're, because they have your CV already and the elements in it. And you bring out some elements from the CV, but also some elements which were not in there. And you weave those together to create your statement of purpose and to, um, to answer those questions. And they do mention on their website that a tie between your Indian institution, so the one you will be currently either graduating from or have been already graduated, and your future French institutions would be an asset. Um, uh, yeah, there are some partnerships, some Indo-French partnerships. So, um, for example, in um, Ashoka University, for example, has uh, a tie up with my previous university. Uh, uh, Sciences Po Paris. So in that case, it's also an asset and you can have more uh, elements to mention. It helps your application a bit, but it does not disadvantage the others who do not have partnership, whose institution do not have partnerships. Next, yeah. Um, so in general tips, what it's mostly focused on the um, the statement of purpose here, but otherwise as well. So it is, they would provide you, um, well, more often than not, they have in uh, previous years, a word limit. So that is why answers should be brief, but try to weave in as much as information um, in a balanced manner, which, so they, it's not like you information dumped into your statement of purpose, but weave it in a way that you see uh, that the other, the, uh, the evaluator can see that you have done quite a bit and you have highlighted your relevant, your strong suits in a manner. Um, another thing would be to perhaps if you have any further, like any previous experience with for example, French language, maybe you have been learning it already in uh, either at your, your university or you went to French in, like Institute de Orleans Francaise in some cities in India. Uh, if you did that, that would be good to highlight. Even if you do not have certifications, um, for example, the Delft DALF, it's still good to highlight that you have been studying or even if you've been just on your own um, and looking at it or Perhaps you have any uh, experience with the French culture in some manner, um, a cinema or 
music or art or you've had any professional or academic links perhaps you remotely interned for uh, a french institution a french company or you worked with the, any french researcher that would be these points are very good to highlight to build on your link that how you reached the decision of um, um choosing France as your destinations. And finally, beyond your academic performance, it's good to, if you did any extracurricular activities during your time at, uh, in, during your bachelor's in your university in India, it's, uh, it's good to focus on that as well, that how you are um, pursuing other things as well beyond academics, if you got the chance to. And I think that is that was all from my side, and we pass it over for the Chapter uh, Chapter Master Exchange Scholarship to Malavika. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gorangi. Am I audible? Yes, okay, you are. Perfect. perfect. So I will be taking you through the Chapter Master Exchange Scholarship, the second category of scholarship which is uh, offered under the Chapter Series. Can we move? Yes. Right. So the exchange scholarship, as the name suggests, is for exchange students for a duration of around three to six months. Now, uh, a lot of colleges have tied up partnership based exchange programs with French universities. And this is where the Chapak uh, exchange scholarship comes into play, where students from any field, uh, any stream of study, who are enrolled in an Indian institute at a master's degree level can avail uh, the scholarship for an exchange program in France. Again, for a period of up to one to six months, but usually these exchange, uh, exchange programs happen for three to six months. Now the benefits for the scholarship include uh, a stipend of 860 euros. Now this isn't an exact number because uh, Around five to six students each year get the exchange scholarship and it's quite a spectrum where some of the best performing students here get an entire full scholarship while some students get a partial scholarship. So it depends on the amount of scholarship you receive and it's not a fixed amount. However, the best possible scenario can be a base amount of 860 euros and you also get some other allowances on top if that is what your scholarship uh, document suggests. You also get a social security student visa and campus France fee waiver and assistance in finding an affordable student accommodation. Now, the student accommodation, it's usually uh, there are certain tie ups that the Chapuk scholarship has with the crew residency or other student residencies. And it is uh, more or less limited to those residencies rather than across all kinds of accommodation. And it also depends on availability. Moving on. Uh, the eligibility criteria for the scholarship is the same as that for the master scholarship, which uh, Kunal covered. So I will not be going through this. This is right here and the session is recorded. So we can stay here for a few seconds and move on. Yeah, I think we can switch. All right. So the application process for the exchange scholarship, again, is quite similar. You have to submit the application on the online portal. And <coughs> you have to submit it on the online portal. And there's a deadline which comes with it. Now, we will be covering the timeline later on in the slides, however, because this is an exchange scholarship. The uh, application opens twice a year, one for the fall semester and one for the summer semester. So again, uh, for both the semester, the process for application is the same and all the documents must be submitted in PDF or the JPEG format. Applications should be submitted with the documents and the documents have been listed in the portal itself. Again, we'll be going through it. Uh, moving on. Now, these are the application documents uh, which must be submitted. Firstly, there's a passport sized photograph a copy of the first page of your passport, copy of the acceptance letter from the uh, French university. Now, sometimes you may not get your acceptance letter on time with the timeline of the application. In that case, an email correspondence of acceptance from your college and the French university will also do the job. You also have to submit your mark sheets and the degrees if there are any involved and also documents of any internship or employment in the past. And uh, an NOC from your Indian Institute or your home institute is also very important. 
because uh, for for I think the exchange program to be considered legitimate from for the CHAP point of view, you need to have an MOU between your home university and the French university you're going to, which is why the NOC is uh, again a requirement and you must look into it. Your CV obviously and a recommendation letter from the university. Now this is absolutely optional. You may or may not submit it. It's on your, uh, it's your choice. However, it will make your chances much stronger if you submit a recommendation letter. Next slide, please. Uh, now the selection for the scholarship is based on academic excellence, consistency quality of the application and the statement of purpose. There is again, no CGPA or percentage cutoff for you to apply for the scholarship and the knowledge of French language is optional. It's not mandatory. I do not speak French. So uh, that's not an issue at all. This is a question I get a lot if French is uh, an important asset for sure uh, for you to live in France, but not for the scholarship. It's absolutely optional. Moving on. Now I will focus quite a bit on the statement of purpose, uh, just like uh, what Gurangi covered. The statement of purpose in this case is broken down into three questions. The first question is briefly explain your exchange program and how it is coherent with your current bachelor's and master's curriculum. Now, uh, this question basically aims to understand that what you're doing as an exchange program is a nice continuation or at least an add-on to the curriculum you're already following rather than uh, just something you're doing out of your will to be in France rather than also to pursue academic excellence. So here it is very important for you to not be generic and uh, in detail explain what you're doing back at your home university. So please name your potential and preferred courses which you want to do in France and also name some courses you're doing back in your home university and make sure there is a pattern to it. There should either be a complementarity to it, courses should add on very well. For example, I did a lot of development courses back in my home university and I wanted to uh, do a couple of project management and policy courses in France to bring it all together and work in the development sector. So this is how I answered my first question and it would be a nice way to go ahead with it. Now, again, uh, another common query I get is when you're submitting this application, you will not have chosen your courses of interest on the online portal for your French university because the timelines more often than not do not match. So what you do is you name the potential courses you want to take or the preferred courses and it's okay if you have not registered for those courses. It's just uh, the question exists to understand your interest and the alignment of courses. So it's absolutely okay. As long as you're able to establish that sort of alignment. And after you have established an alignment of uh, what courses you do and what you want to do, you have to state a rationale on why this is the case. Now, a line on your rationale will be enough because as you can see, the second and the third question will help you further develop on what uh, motivation you have behind your entire exchange program. Now, uh, forgot to mention, your answers will have to be 250 words long or shorter. You cannot exceed 250 words per answer. So you have to be very crisp, use simple language, and you have to get the point across rather than building on very generic statements or something that most people will write in their applications, right? So please be to the point. Now your second question is explain why and how you choose the French, you chose the French university uh, and what benefits do you ex expect from your stay in France? Now I'm going to break this down into the two questions. The first question being why you chose your French university. Again, feel free to name drop courses and professors. And like Gorangi said, when you're name dropping, please do your research because uh, this can also go wrong for you. So please uh, read up, see that, you know, if there are any particular courses you're very interested in and if that is a perfect add-on to what you're doing in your home university. Now, besides the courses, one thing about the Charpak Exchange Scholarship is it does not just look for academic excellence. It is also looking for someone who, uh, who has more to take away from the exchange program than just academics, right? And this, the second question is where you bring that out. So when you're talking about your French university, you can also look to explore other things beyond courses like extracurricular, exposure, multiculture, and so on. So for me, what I did and uh, what a lot of my juniors did, which also helped them get the scholarship was... Um, sports so i play tennis and that was also the year when uh, a very important tournament was happening in france so i talked about how i would love 
to probably volunteer or even take part in contributing to the organization of the tournament and my university is also very forward when it comes to sports so i talked about sports quite a lot along with uh, academics and that i think makes your application very um, robust and more than academics there's more that you have to offer as an exchange student um so that is very important so just choose your niche if you're into art if you're into sports if you're into culture and see how you can talk about it and how france can add value to it right uh, and also most of the topics will be talked about so most of the people they talk about how they want to love uh, learn the french language or they love the french culture and the cuisine that's great but if you're talking about such points make sure again that you name drop or you bring in a specific point so that it shows uh, you're not being generic and yeah that's about it build these two things together uh, your academics and co curricular and that will give you the perfect answer for your second question and thirdly what are your academic and professional goals explain how the exchange program mm-hmm. will uh, help you achieve these goals be concrete don't uh, everyone wants to be successful so the answer that you know you want to have a great career in policy or you want to have a great career in development or whatever field you choose will not be enough you will have to be very specific of this is the kind of uh, you know work you look to do in the future xyz is what motivates you to keep doing it and that's your rationale and it's okay if it is completely different or if it is very ambitious as long as you are being to the point uh, and not generic you are uh, good to go and make sure uh, that all the answers you've given through these three questions it falls together coherently so this is not exactly a statement of purpose in a conventional sense where you're writing one long essay but it should be treated as one where all the answers you give in the three sections it should even if taken without the questions it should come together as a nice essay so make sure that your answers are not completely random and unrelated to each other one thing should build on to the other and that is i think the key to answering these questions next slide please uh here's the timeline like i mentioned uh the application opens twice in a year uh the spring session and the autumn session and uh, here are the deadlines as mentioned next slide and yeah the general trip uh, tips as uh, i've already covered please have coherence in your answers which more than just your academics or you know what a resume conventionally shows if you have an interest in culture if you have an interest in anything as random as it is as long as you can build a story out of it it is only going to play to your advantage advantage especially with the exchange scholarship because more than academic excellence they are looking for a person who can be a face of cultural exchange between india and between france uh, between india and france right so you want to be that brand and to be a brand you need to offer more than just uh, academic excellence so feel free go all out and pitch it well and please use simple and crisp writing style it's not a test for your english language it's a test for uh, who you are as a person and it's the best when you're keeping it simple keeping it to the point that's about it uh, if you have any questions happy to answer perfect thank you so much amalavika mm-hmm. and kunal and arangi for such a comprehensive um presentation i am just going to yeah now open the floor for questions and um, if anyone wants to ask a question you can either um raise your hand and put it to the panelists if you are okay being in the recording or you can um um send your question in chat just for the benefit of all of those who are watching a the recording there were two questions in chat that i'm just going to quickly summarize one was uh what format would be good for a cv for the scholarship and so um kunal said that you don't need a specific format for your cv just to which have just choose whichever is um going to help you make your information look concise and as informative as possible um there's a second question uh which is um does this scholarship also cover master degree in fine arts and design um and i guess this is for the masters um ame scholarship so yeah i don't think the bylaws mention any specific field of preference so and i mean you can also take a look at the past uh, scholars they always have a pdf where they publish the results for every year you can check the diversity of the courses so to my knowledge it's okay you just need and admissions offer from a french institution that's it 
Yeah, and just to add quickly, um, like Kunal said, you can look at the PDF. And for um, a few disciplines like arts, um, you know, uh, culinary skills and all, there is another scholarship for just specifically for Indian women, though. It's called Amba Dalmia Scholarship. It's also by Campus Fronts. And uh, yeah, that could be good, uh, interesting to check out for women. Oh, very interesting. Um, another question is, is it, um, sorry, is it, uh, do you need to provide an acceptance letter while applying? Preferably, yes. A conditional or an unconditional letter is preferred. But if, in case the university is taking some time around the dead, deadline of your chart pack, you can provide email proofs or any other kind of proof to show that you have correspondence with the university and they're going to provide you with an admissions offer later on or they're considering it and on. So preferably a letter by you apply is great, but if you're not, then correspondence is okay. Okay, another question is about, um, again, CV. So because I'm just, it's been answered already, uh, the... Um, it, you don't need to have a Europass format as CV. It can be um, any format that you prefer. Um, okay, anyone else? Do you have any question? I there was a question that came to me on chat. Maybe we could um answer that, which is um, uh, if you could elaborate on the French uh language requirement and sort of what forms of certifications are valid if if you um have some proficiency in in French. I could answer maybe. Um, so I did, I did um attach. I was taking a French language course at the De at Delhi University, so at uh, Stephen's College, and I did attach my diploma from there. So that is still um just good to add and to showcase that you still have a, a qualification. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Does um, anybody else have a question that they want to maybe ask by raising their hand? Um, otherwise, we can ask uh, another question that came to me on chat, which is um, about uh, letters of recommendation. Sort of, um, uh, how, is there a, how many, is there a limit to how many you have to provide? And um, how do you choose between academic and professional referees? Is there um, a preference? Um, if you want to do uh, academic courses, say, for example, mine, which was an MPhil, then having at least two academic references are great. And uh, in general, I'll suggest take a look at the syllabus of your master's program here. See what kind of prerequisites that they need. So for econ, I, they need prerequisites in math and intermediary, in, intermediate econ. So it's best to contact referees or academic referees who have taught you these subjects or with whom you've worked around these lines, that will add more emphasis because they will not write a standard LOR. They'll write a more specific one, right? And uh, if your work, if your um, degree is more work ex oriented, say if it's an executive program or is it a management program with a substantive amount of internships and work ex involved, then perhaps adding some professional referees would be quite quite interesting, quite, quite important. Not compulsory, but having professional recommendations also makes 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 it a, makes a difference. So keep a balance, that's what I'll say. Um, Malavika, uh, what about for the exchange program? Because they didn't specify whether it was for the master's, AME or the... Um, again, for the exchange program, it is not very specific to um, to the subject you're taking or the field of study you're going for. Uh, it is more of, um, again, according to me, it is more of uh, you holistically. So a short recommendation, recommendation letter, not something which is too uh, long or academic would do the job. And uh, it is absolutely optional. And I don't know about a limit. I'm not sure about that. But uh, I think, and according to like a lot of people I know who have uh, applied for Chalpak Exchange, a recommendation letter is very, it's 
very tokenistic and it's it has to be short and it has to be about your entire profile of you doing extracurricular academics and so on that's about it for the exchange scholarship okay uh, there's another question in chat um does this scholarship only cover admission letters from the selected institution is there anything like that or admission letters from any french institution will do um i think uh, any any accredited french institution will be fine for the eiffel scholarship is a bit little different because uh, institutions have to participate in the eiffel program mention their intent but i think for the chart pack uh, since it's only targeted for just for indians and it's not a full global program per se i'll say any accredited french institution would be okay now uh, just a follow up maybe is um are you able to change the university after you received the scholarship so if you applied for two and you received an admission offer from one at the time of the application to the scholarship but heard back from another after are you able to change the university uh, i'm not sure because okay so if you're applying for the scholarship and you've received offers from two or three of them then a ranking is what they ask for so hence you can perhaps change but in the middle of like after all this has been done i'm not sure so i think the just contact campus france and get more details or maybe read the bylaws on the website i'm not sure okay. perfect um i think there's uh, another question that came to me which was on the exchange scholarship so i think you mentioned that um it's it's mandatory that there needs to be a tie up between the indian university that you're studying in and a french university so does that mean um you're ineligible to apply if there is no tie up um well i cannot comment on the eligibility that's not my uh, position but i feel like the point of this entire tie up is for the process to be legitimate and there's a lot of uh, paperwork that's involved in terms of you know getting an noc from your home university uh and getting an acceptance correspondence from the french university so even i feel like even if there's no mou or a tie up per se as long as your french university and the home university are in touch with each other it will do the job right um so for example for my case we had an mou sure but also much before i got into the picture how i acquired all the documents uh, from the french university before the acceptance letter was uh, going centrally through my home university so like the uh, exchange department the semester exchange department of my university wrote to the french university and that is the email uh, pdf i submitted for my chart pack application because i hadn't received an acceptance yet so i think that's all that matters so even if there's no mou as long as you can involve your institution home institution it should not be a problem it's the involvement which matters you cannot like take it up independently is what i mean that will be a problem like you and the french university it has to be your college and the french university okay that that makes sense um if um the questions that had been asked on chat have if you feel like they haven't been adequately responded you can either ask a follow up or again sort of raise your hand and put the question directly to the panelists um while um we do that um just want to let you all know that i've put in chat um the link for the scholarship that um uh, that gorangi mentioned um and i've also put a link for the campus france website where you'll find information about all of the scholarships and and to, um to study in france and i've also put the link for the char pack master scholarship and um I've also put a link for the YouTube channel of Project Edu Access. This is where we upload all of the recordings of our public workshops, and you'll find a recording of today's workshop also on this website. Oh, uh, sorry, on this YouTube channel. And I've also linked our um Project Edu Access's um 
website where we um, have developed a number of resources on writing our application documents. I've sent a link uh, for that as well. So in case um, this, these can be of any assistance to you. Um, we're almost um, done with the schedule of time. Um, so if, um, if no one has any questions, then maybe we can close the session, but maybe we'll wait for a, a minute. Again, if you don't feel comfortable asking the question directly in chat, you can send it to me or any of the three panelists privately and, and they'll answer the question. Or again, if, if you're okay asking directly, then you can raise your hand and ask, uh, um, ask the question. I'm also sending in the meantime a link to the exchange scholarship, um, the child pack exchange scholarship link. So you can find you find most of the information um on on the website. Um right. Ms. Ra yeah. just, just just a moment. Uh the question got me thinking, and I just want to add one more line to it in case it was misunderstood last time about the MOU. So just to put it out there, you your college, it's okay if it does not have a pre-existing relationship with a French college. Just get someone from your college admin to email the French university and have that email correspondence. So I just wanted to put it out there. It does not have to be pre-existing. Yes. Amazing. That I think is a very helpful clarification because this sort of allow more people to be eligible in, in a sense. Um Okay, I think uh, we don't have any questions and now we've completed an hour on this workshop. Um, so thank you so much, Kunal, Karangi and Malavika for joining us today and for hosting this workshop so wonderfully. Um, I'm sure it, it helped a lot of students and, and will help them. Um, thank you everyone who joined us today. I hope you found this session helpful and I'll see you. Um, so tomorrow uh, we're hosting uh, two workshops and you You'll find information about that on our link tree as well as on our um, on our um, social media. We're hosting a public workshop on the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, and we're hosting a workshop on the Wyden Field Hoffman Trust Scholarship to study at Oxford. Um, so you can join us there. And um, and yeah, thank you so much again, Konal, Baranki, and Malavika. Um, I'll see you soon. Have a nice uh, weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye, take care. Thank you.